Hello again, welcome back to Craft Aquatic. I'm Matt G. In this video, I'll be showing you a new DIY nano reef system that I recently designed and built. The setup is three flower vases on a stand that house all of the reef components to create a very unique coral only setup. I'll start by showing you the entire system and the coral that live within. The system is meant to be as functional as it is a piece of art. I'll talk a bit about that and we'll go over all the equipment choices and components that make this tiny triple vase setup work. At the end, we'll deliver this unique system to its new home at one of our local reef shops. Here we go. The first thing I want to talk about is who a system like this might be for. Caring for these vases requires weekly water changes. That might sound like a pain, but the total volume of these three vases is slightly over one gallon. It almost sounds impossible that you could keep coral in such a small volume of water, but the fact that they are 100% reset every week is one of the main reasons why. That said, maintaining a system like this may be easiest for someone with an existing reef tank, where you could simply use the already tested and mature water from an established system for your water changes. With that said, a hobbyist could also make up a gallon of salt water, making certain the parameters match, and that would work as well. Each container is entirely unique in its own little body of water, housing different types of low-demand coral. I've chosen toadstool leather, palaunaptheia, and star polyps for the resilience. The Blastomusa merletti and Montebora setosa add a splash of red to the green. The biggest vase started out with a few small polyp stonies, green mushroom coral, and the orange palithoa. But you'll see in the end that I changed all that out for the palithoa grandis colony and turbinaria, since they seem to better complement the coral in the other vases. I set the vases up on this antique plant stand that I found. The rear board I installed and it serves as an area where I can hang all of the various reef keeping components and keep them out of sight from the front view. The mirror is here so I can keep an eye on the temperature controller while testing things out and the canopy houses the shared LED light bar. I built it so that the fixture could dissipate heat while being easily removable for maintenance. The LED bar needed quite a bit of work which I'll be showing you later on in the video, but I'm gonna do something really interesting with this end cap where the LED hangs over. When it comes to flow, a power head would overwhelm and overheat such a small volume of water. So I'm using a series of air pumps to create turbidity in the water column. This is not a new idea. If you search the topic of nano refaces, you will find a dozen or so articles about maintaining water movement utilizing air pumps in nano reef aquariums. I could have gone with one air pump and a couple check valves, but instead opted for the three you see here. We'll discuss that a bit more later on in the video. Air is actually the easy part. The challenge in such a small volume of water is managing evaporation. Since I won't be able to top these off daily, I had to partially cap the vases off. So I'm using these plastic drip trays for potted plants. They let the light through and maintain the water level for about seven days. So then of course there is the issue of keeping the glass clean. For that I'm using this DIY nano magnet which allows for just a few centimeters of clearance. Heat was a tricky challenge for this setup. I decided to use a seven watt heat mat for the two smallest faces and a heater for the single largest one. I moved this to the bench downstairs so we can take a better look at the components mounted to the back of this nano reef system. This is a heater controller with two built-in probes and the two plugs that control the two independent heating elements. In this case we have one 7 watt heat pad and a 5 watt beta heater for the larger vase. This is the LED driver for the LED bar driving 54 watts for 18 3 watt LEDs. I went with three air pumps since the aquarium grade check valves that are not brass tend to be very low quality. I don't want to have to constantly tweak the three valves coming off the one central pump or risk that one vase may lose air. Three pumps were simply a better option and you can see here that I combined all three AC plugs into one to save a little real estate on the integrated power strip. I also spent some time reducing the length of some of the other cables. The silicon airline is routed through check valves and physically mounted to the rim of the board housing all the components. This is good enough to keep the airline angled and secure in the reef faces. The 7 watt high door heater you see in the large vase has been replaced by the much smaller 5 watt aquion I mentioned earlier. 
If you happen to be one of those folks who enjoy watching Craft Aquatic, you might want to hit the notification bell for upcoming videos. I'll be using this lithium iron phosphate battery to design a reef specific generator. I'm really looking forward to it and want to share it with all of you. All right, back to the Nano. The reef bar is housed in this DIY fixture that can be moved back and forth while maintaining the vases. It was also designed to allow for complete removal of the light bar. There's a good reason why we are removing it here. This bar has been running for over four years on my frag system, so it's overdue for an LED refresh. So this is what happens to LED chips when they burn out. They sort of turn all black and charred. This reduces the power by up to 80%, so they will need to be replaced. I'll be using three watt 430 to 450 nanometer LED chips, soldering them directly to the same board that these burned out chips are mounted to. It is generally the chips and not the other components that wear out over time. First thing I did was desolder the old burned out chip from the board, then applied a bit of thermal adhesive to the mounting surface. If you're planning on refreshing an old LED, be sure to orient the chip properly before soldering. There should be a plus and a minus on the chip, but you can also use this little hole which indicates the negative side of the chip. I wanted to show you my soldering setup. This is the Miniware MDP-M01 DC bench power interface. I use it to drive a TS100 soldering iron set to no higher than 380 degrees Celsius. The Miniware bench supply is great for testing LED chips as well. So here you have it, the three vase reef system with those end cap lights and we've placed some plants underneath. We can also place some terrariums under there. That was sort of the idea I was going for. And here we have the mossariums all ready to head out to the shop. And this is the three vases all packed up in the cooler and I've disassembled the stand so it's all ready to go and transport to its new home. We've arrived safely at Aquarium Solutions 101, one of the biggest and nicest aquarium shops in the Hudson Valley. They have a beautiful showroom with an extensive collection of coral and fish. Here's one of the display tanks. 101 has plans for a bunch more displays. You'll want to come check this place out if you're in the area. And here it is folks, freshly set up in its new home, the Craft Aquatic Triple Nano Vase System. It's so cool to see it here on the shelf, right in the entrance for curious aquarists like myself to come check out. The two mosteriums are miniature worlds in themselves, flanking this unique reef display. They are great for the setup as they require little to no maintenance and will thrive under the glow of the two daylight spectrum LEDs. And here it is again a few days later. I want to come back and check on the coral and see how they were doing. You can see those giant pelitho gigantes in the vase to the left, and the two leather corals showing all their polyps in color. Everything is out. This nano reef setup is already doing great, and I think it will be very happy here. So that is it for this episode of Craft Aquatic. If you like this one, there are dozens more interesting and informative videos just like it on the Craft Aquatic channel. Be sure to hit the thumbs up, subscribe, leave a comment or question. I love hearing from you. I'll see you again in the next video.